If you're looking to get into the flying model aircraft and you don't want to break the bank and you want to build your own plane, look no further than the DW Rainbow 2. This is an excellent model for the money that will get you started in the hobby. In this video, we're going to go over the airplane. We're going to go over the specs, what comes with it. We're going to put the watt meter on it. And then we're going to go to the field and do some flying. And let Will get the sticks and let us know what he thinks. Got it running on a 1502 cell stock system. I did change the prop to a three blade drone prop. Uh, gave a little more thrust at the bottom end. Overall better flight. And the stock prop is like a GWS style seven inch. I, nah, throw that away, get a, get a dupe prop. Only other modifications, I did change the push rods on here because when building I wasn't paying attention and I broke one of the clevises. Uh, so I didn't have a spare. So these are dollar upgrades or a dollar and change upgrades here. So if you want to do that kind of stuff, you're more than welcome to do on your own. But that's all I've really done on this thing. Other than that, just build stock. So Big shout out here. to Hilltop Flyers here in Loganville, Georgia. Beautiful field. Beautiful yep. paved paved runway. It's actually like a tarp. Geotextile. Geotextile. Like if you come during the weekend, there's lots of guys here. If you're new to the hobby, these guys will are the best, friendliest guys I know. They'll come and they'll help you get flying. There we are. Full throttle. Very quiet for a wing. <laughs> there's no rudder. I was about yeah, to use the rudder. It's not there. Almost... There's nothing there. I was flying the yak earlier and I, I was just doing uh, knife edges and I was like, wait, can't do that with this. All right, I'm going to do a loop, Mike. Go for it. So that was just a soft loop. Didn't pull hard on back on the sticks. Just wanted to see what it do. I'm about half throttle again. Just bringing it back around. All right, I'm going full. I am. Woo! Hold on a little bit. Do a slower pass here. Do you want like a little bank out on it? Just get right there. Nice. Plug her on in. This thing's perfect for following anything under 50 miles. That's vertical. Alright, uh, my favorite. Do a stall. Alright, hold on. Let me, uh... Alright. Wait, wait, wait. Get out. You can get a little higher. Wait, I lost it. Oh, okay. Alright, well, there's a the stall. I lost it. Yeah, it just glides. <laughs> Alright, do that again. I, I'm put, punching up, put it in a stall, and it just drops over and nose down, and you just glide again. So no, no, uh... Very minimal. I mean, it's a wing, so... Oh, these five. things are really forgiving with that. And really, this airframe could take a little more power if you want it to. But once you get a little too much power, you're going to have to start reinforcing the ailerons. Or the tailbones, I guess you'd say, on this one. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, a little bit. The sparring's adequate for the frame, but I think the control surfaces could use a little more sparring for extra, if you're going to throw extra power at it. This thing is just smooth. Relaxing flyer, something we could handle if you want to put some LED strips, LED uh, light strips on it. See what exact prop I got on this, but anything similar to this, it's a six inch three blade, works very well. Mm, that looks good. Get something like that, put some light strips on it, and come out here and do like a night fly with something like this, you know. Perfect, that's two cell too. Oh, okay, I got plenty of those too. Two cell what? Like 300 or. Seemingly forever. <laughs> All 
All right, well, so this is one of your favorite flying airplanes, right? This thing was incredibly fun to fly for as cheap and affordable as it was. Uh, this thing is a thousand millimeter wingspan, so it's roughly about a 40 inch wingspan. Faze is going to break out this trusty 40 inches. That's what we get. Measurement right there. There you go. So let's let's talk about the build. Who who built this? I built this because I I don't build anything. Yeah. Okay. So the build was actually really quick, really easy. If you got a, a night spare night to build a plane, no, not a problem. Um, the fuselage comes essentially three pieces: the winglets and the plywood. Um, motor mount and canopy so it comes just like this yeah so it's pretty very little parts count um notice how it's pre-painted how long did it take you to build it uh I built it during the day at work on the counter so Perfect. i mean it was just spare spare time built it in um very quick build medium ca uh bob smith accelerator or kicker whatever you want to call it um I used a little bit of foam tech, not a lot actually on this build the design was really quick easy to the you know, hardest part was cutting a little bit of foam to line up the canopy part because they don't pre-cut the holes. Um, so basically just do a little bit of measurement, line it up with the front, cut it and you're good to go. Um, the biggest thing I would say on these is there's a couple things I would change on it from the factory to make it more enjoyable or just a better plane in general in my opinion. Um, not that you have to do it, but a couple things being the prop and the push rods. The factory push rods are carbon push rods with a little uh, compression screws and they're very flimsy in my opinion. I didn't like them. In this particular case, I did use some 256 push rod that we had laying around. Um, however, you can buy brand new, these are Dubro 256 push rods, thread rods with quick links already on them. Um, they're $1.30 or something like that. They're under two bucks each. I would recommend those. Um, secondly, the prop. The factory prop is a GWS style. You see here, a seven by 3.5. Two blade. One, the hole you'd have to drill out to put the collet on anyway. Okay worthless in my opinion take the prop throw it in the trash do whatever you want to do with it don't put it on this plane in my opinion okay you get a um, couple options factories first. what props that i did run on it i tried a uh six by 4.5 two blade i did try those they were okay um i wanted a little more power so i ended up going to a three blade in this particular flight video that we did i used the gem fan flash 6042s that's what i had on hand but basically a tri-blade six inch with anywhere from a four to five inch pitch would be pretty good on two cell operation. So I ran the battery pretty much all the way to the front in this case. CG was about just shy of an inch behind this carbon spar slot. So from where, where do you measure, where do you say an inch? Factory CG is right here where I marked it there. Okay. So I don't remember what it was off the top of my head. So you're about uh, three quarters to a half inch behind that spot. Oh yeah. But factory CG was there where I actually flew was a little farther back, basically about right here. Better to start nose heavy than tail heavy for your first couple flights. Um, another thing to remember if this is your first wing that you're building, make sure you have up reflex, about 10 degrees or so up reflex in the right. surfaces. So explain, explain that in a little more in detail about up reflex. So the wing needs up travel. Basically, instead of being flat with following the contour of the wing, you want to make sure you have a little up in it. Um, if you don't do that, it's going to pretty much nose dive to the ground when you go to hand launch. So when you build it, you want to, most people will build the wing like that, and that's actually straight. That's straight, but you actually you want, want to a little up, up reflex. Yeah. yeah. Make sure it's equal on both sides. Otherwise, yeah. um, super easy. On the, the old things. days, we used to have little things on the bottom. You kind of look, throw it like a dart. Yeah. I think the original version of this actually had a little wood skid. It's not needed, guys. This kind of plane, you can literally just grab it by the wing and just kind of discus toss, and it's it, will kind it of, flies right out of your hand. I, I know this sounds silly, but how much pressure? Do you throw it hard as you can, or you just toss it? No, just... kind of let it do its thing. Upwards angle. Um, you don't really throw. You kind of just let it do its thing. Yeah. Um, and what at least two throttle. thirds throttle. At least two full thirds. throttle might be a little more torquey depending on the prop you use, but at least two thirds throttle. All right, let's get right. the watt meter. See what kind of watt. Amps and wattage we're pulling. So with this stuff, this goes in line. I wish they come out. It does. Okay. So this goes in line with the battery. So the juice flows through. All right. Zero dB. All right. This is a fully charged battery, 8.4 volts. You're holding the plane. I got it. So we had 11 amps. So we had about 90 watts, uh, max voltage or 
max amperage of 11.4 amps at 94 watts was our peak. So uh, it hovered around 90 watts th the rest of the 30 seconds. What kind of speed controller does this have? This is a 20 amp speed controller. So you've got plenty of room to go with. Yes. So now from there, we're going to push it. This is oversized prop in my opinion. Um, we're going to put a 1300 three cell on there, also okay. fully charged. Not so recommended. Check our temperature. Motor is cold after the first test. Not recommended. All right, so this is what this is where a watt meter comes in handy because yeah. now you can experiment without really burning up your stuff at the field. All right, ready? The thing I want to mention, this on two cell with that prop was fairly quiet. Yeah, so you very quiet. Really quiet. You could go to a park and not bother people. Remember in the old days, those zaggy wings sounded like the damn War of the Worlds where you just flat as crap. Seven inch props running that on 4S. You can hear them from across, uh, you can hear them from across this, this town. When dinosaurs walk through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyways, a two cell on this little guy, really quiet, you can fly it. No one's gonna bother you for flying at a park. Yeah. Blue me. The price, the fun factor on this thing was through the roof. I think this is an awesome, fun little plane for anyone that wants to fly, on, especially on a budget, or just have something that they can leave in their car and they don't have to worry about damaging. It's not that $700 foam jet that you just scratched because you got it in the car and left it there, or it warped because it's foam. Um, this is an awesome plane.